I went from originally South East London, I moved straight into Hialeah. Okay. I was in Hialeah for about three years. Do you know Spanish? No. <laughs> I know a few Yo. little words and stuff. Yo, how was that living in Hialeah and not knowing Bruh, Spanish? Da binga. <laughs> Yo, listen, <laughs> listen, bro. So today we got Jake Brutal Boswick. You already know. Thank you for your time. We no. appreciate you. He has a fight coming up. We're about a week out. So how are you feeling? Yeah, no, I'm feeling amazing, mate. I appreciate you having me on the show. Anytime. Um, yeah, yeah. March 23rd, just over a week, about 10 days, 9 days. Um, yeah, I'm feeling amazing, mate. Yeah, super, super excited to... Nice. Yeah. And yeah. for the people listening that don't know you or don't know about you, where are you from? Um, obviously, yeah, my name's Jake, as you obviously said. Um, I'm from South East London, obviously, originally. Um, obviously, I've been in the 305 now for almost 10 years. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I'm a... Well, I'm a well, guy from London, mate, over here now. What brought you to Miami? Uh, originally, it was training. Um, actually, nice. uh, yeah, I come over for training. So obviously, I've been in the fight industry for, you know, most of my career. So, well, all of my career. So, um, yeah, I come over here to wrestle and do some stuff. So, yeah, I had to come, uh, come overseas. Why did you hear about Miami? Like, are we that good? Are we that big that people from London are out here trying to train in Miami? So, originally, originally, I actually had... Um, some guys training the American top team um, okay. in Coconut Creek. Shout out where American I live now. top team, shout out Danielle. So yeah, so obviously, you know, um, I originally came over there to there. Yeah, I came over with Hector Lombard and a few of my other guys from, from the UK, Bola, Brad Pickett, uh, Jason Young, you know. Jason Young actually fought Dustin Poirier. So um, yeah, we, uh, yeah, it was crazy how it all happened, but yeah, it was 20, you know, I was 24 at the time and yeah, I came over for training and I'm here where I'm at right now. How old were you when you when you moved? That's a big uh, when move. I moved, I came here. I was 24. I'm I'm 34 okay. now. A lot's changed. Obviously, I left American Top Team about six years ago now. Like I, I haven't I haven't been there. Um, so obviously, I trained still with Phil Deru. That's obviously I had that relationship. So I was trained with Phil Deru, Deru Strong Performance, um, and uh, Kevin Gleason and Jeff Peritz in Sunrise. Obviously, with Lorenzo Medina as well at Beta Bay Boxing. Yep. Shout out Lorenzo. Oh, he's the man. Got that tenth yeah. knockout. Yeah, he's a legend. Bro. That's Listen, crazy. Yeah. He's a proper legend. And he's, like, and he's young too. Bro, he's a, listen, I started training and started sparring with him when he was 15. That's how I met him. Oh, wow. When he was 15. He's, I got pictures, mate. He's such a baby face, <laughs> you know, such a balloon, round face. But he was slick with it, you know? And um, yeah, he's, he's like, I've learned just being around the kid, mate. He's so talented, like, fucking proper prospect. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. We yeah. were lucky to have him on. We could tell. I mean, he's going to be next up for sure. I already oh, tend to know, and he's so young. Like, yeah. he has a whole great future ahead of him yeah 100 percent. yeah no he's a very hard working kid you know he's young bro he's still in yeah. his teens yeah like and he is like beating people up in the gym bro you know like S speaking of young how were you in your young days like about like a teenager maybe even younger like how how did you grow up in london how wow was your childhood? honestly so for me um my childhood like that's got deep deep like so I mean, let's let's start there and yeah, let's see okay. you know what so got you I, on I grew, fighting. I grew up on um, I grew up on an estate called um, the Ferrier Estate. It's you know, people would call it the hood over here. Is probably the best way to say it. You know, it's in southeast London. It was an absolute dive. You know, it was it was nice inside, but it wasn't. You know, a lot of criminal activity and a lot of bullshit. I was growing up around that. A lot of violence, a lot of fighting. You know, a lot of drinking and things like that. Just everywhere. Um, so yeah, that was obviously in South East London in Kidbrook, SE3, shout out to the people. Um, and um, yeah, just obviously, yeah, one thing led to another from that. I started uh, started training. I was in, I got into like Taekwondo when I was like seven or eight years old. Um, and then I got into judo when I was like 10, 11. I was playing rugby at the time. I've always been a hands-on, you know, all go aggressive kind of kid, you know? So as always, I needed something to keep me going. I, you know, I grew up riding motorbikes, like motocross, you know, going to a few races and stuff like that. Very adrenaline junking, like, want to do everything kind of child, yeah, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, rugby, I would say, is close to football, but I feel like it's even crazier. It's different, like, no, we don't no have pads. the padding and all that stuff, but you still can't attack unless you have the ball. I can't hit you unless you have the ball. So with that defense and all that, you can't touch each other. 
okay. you can't just like slam into somebody you know so it is different it's a whole different kind of game um because you have to pass backwards and shit like it is very different no yeah, but rugby is you know it's it's a proper man sport for sure that's what know? i was about to say it's yeah. tough yeah it's a you tough sport tough, no it really sure. is yeah I know, I know if you i know if you uh uh, uh fellas that, that play for that play rugby mate and you know nah yeah. closest thing i did was growing up we would tackle each other playing outside in the grass you know like yeah, know what I mean, but it's still dangerous, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you're still hitting sure. each other, question each other. It's just when you're grown men out there on but the field But when you're grown men, it's competitive and game. it's like, yeah, you got a lot on the line. That's Are there a lot of injuries in rugby? Uh, yeah, yeah, you get yeah. a lot of injuries, yeah. <laughs> Tape and everything everywhere, ears messed up, whatever. So yeah. what got you into, I guess you started with Taekwondo, but I started with Taekwondo. Yeah, I started with Taekwondo when I was a kid, just that was like the first kind of martial arts I learned. Then I got into a judo, and at judo, there was a, another fella there, older than myself, that competed in MMA. And he told me he trained on a Wednesday in a church. I don't know, where, wherever. This guy, originally, his name's Jay. He's, uh, he's, the company was Blitz. B-L-I-T-Z, yeah, Z. Um, and that was like the main sponsor of the gloves for all the shows that I grew up fighting on. So that was who I started training with every Wednesday in a church from when I was about 14, 15. And then when I just turned 16, I was still at school doing my exams and stuff. Um, a fight opportunity popped up if I wanted to fight. It was Cage Rage Contenders 1. I have that posted on my Instagram. The guy was six foot four, 24 years old. Um, and you just, were 16? I was 16. I was at school doing my Damn. exams. So I was a 24 year old against a 16 year old? And he was just coming off of a previous win. Wow. So anyway, when I obviously pulled up to obviously sign all the paperwork and stuff, I blagged my date of birth. Like I'm born in '89, but I put the like, '87, okay. obviously to make you know make it legal. I was that about could... to say it sounds crazy for a 24 year old. Yeah, listen, my, my story is my story is crazy, bro. So whatever, I changed <laughs> changed my date of birth, um, and yeah. Anyway, I come out and I, I knocked him out in nine seconds. In I'm nine talk, seconds? Nine seconds. Like, Damn. Like, this was know, with gloves? Boxing? It was MMA. MMA? This was MMA. Cage oh, Rage shit. Contenders won for Dave O'Donnell and Andy Gear way back in the day, 2006, 2008. That's crazy. Did you make a name for yourself after that nine People knew knockout? about it, but it didn't get blown up too much because then people found out I was young. Yeah, I was about to say, probably a good thing. <laughs> Bro, you know, I, and this is when cell phones and like mobiles That's and whatever crazy. were like super new. And I remember going to school being like, yo, I knocked someone out the weekend and like sending it around to my friends because I had it on my mobile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sure. crazy, bro. So that's legit how much it started. MySpace? Say again? MySpace? Yo, you can still load my MySpace. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, they, I, I've tried to load it one time before and it does actually come up. That's and uh, you can see some things, so it doesn't load properly, but stuff does come up, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, you probably want to put that on MySpace. Yeah, no, I mean, that <laughs> MySpace is old school. Yeah, bro. Yeah, but yeah. So then after that knockout, how, how are you feeling? You just wanted to go in and fight I was again? like, yo, let's go again. And then I got a fight maybe a month later or six weeks later, maybe two months, I don't know. And then I fought a fella called Nick Porter. Um, I just turned 17. So I think, actually, no, I must have been into my 16s towards yeah uh, yeah late 16s then i turned 17 and then i fought nick porter um i scored another ko um it was like a 32 second knockout or something um but i also snapped my thumb like i, I threw a punch and completely like bent it back and i had a complete snap of my thumb so that was yeah. the first proper like injury that sucked um but yeah that was that and it was just like boom let's get the next one obviously i had to let that heal up but it was like i loved it wanted to keep you know getting involved so um yeah it was one fight after another if you look at my career um especially like back in the day like early on um portion of like my show dog even on my own career um i was a kid bro like i didn't know shit i was just i could fight you're just knocking people out just trying to dog people you know would you so consider then, yourself like a knockout specialist or you just hit hard that was that was my thing you know i was classed as that and i've not really knocked anyone out properly in in a little minute you know um i've had some great fights phenomenal fights you know my fights are never boring son you could watch any of my fights you will never ever be like oh this is boring you want to turn it over ever you know that's just not in me you know um but yeah, it was like, yeah, knockout specialist. But then it was like, then I started fighting and proper guys like John Maguire. These are guys that fought in the UFC. John Maguire, Jack Mason, uh, John Phillips. Like I started fighting like 
real proper fighters that have made it, you know. Um, and um, John McGuire was a submissionist, you know. The the uh, the the gyp, uh, what is it? The uh, gyp, uh, gypsy, the gypsy kids, fucking gyp, gypsy jujitsu or whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> anyway, he fuck he, he subbed me. So then that was like my like one of my first kind of losses. Well, actually, no, it was my second loss. But you know, coming out of all the submissions, and then it was like. I didn't know any submissions or anything like that, so I had to learn all of that. I was a kid, bro, like just yeah, trying just to figure learning. it out. Yeah, yeah just damn. really just. But I jumped in the deep end. No amateur exactly, fights. Yeah. Like I jumped straight into pro and was like, "Fuck it." How I'm many amateur fights did you get in before going pro? None. None. I was in school, bro. Oh shit. And just that's what I'm saying. So you just went straight pro. I just jumped straight in the deep end with the sharks, bro. You know. Nice. And um, I remember my first fight, pro fight. And you could head stomp, FYI, I don't think I even mentioned that. There was an open guard rule. This is when I was 16. Um, if the person was on the floor and you was about um, a meter, your head was about a meter away from the cage on your back and you was visible and you're like looking at your opponent, you know how it is, you land on your back, the referee would shout open guard and the person standing could kick him in the head. So that was another rule that, uh, that was uh, about That's when wild. I was when I was sixteen. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. So, what so, do you yeah, prefer, MMA day. or boxing? Like throwing hands. Honestly, boxing all day. Um, yeah. But you boxing, don't like grappling too much. Like the wrestling. Grappling, part? I don't mind. The wrestling part of it, I don't mind. Um, I just, honestly, bro. But like boxing, even coming from bare knuckle, I've had kickboxing fights. I've had thirty MMA fights. Like I got a lot of fight history, mate. Um, like 40 plus professional bouts, let alone anything else outside of that, you know. Um, but when it comes to boxing, when it comes to boxing, it is a fucking art. It is a skill. It is a technician's game, mate. You know, and I respect it so much because I put so much effort into trying to understand it. And like things are clicking and I'm getting shit and, I, and it's like, damn, like boxing is a skill, bro. When you can make people miss, and you can time people. Doesn't matter how big, how tall, or sh how small you are. When you got that timing and you understand range and distance and whatever, and how to use your feet and angles, bro, that is 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 proper skillful. It is know? an art, like you it said. Really, is an art, and I, I, I love it. I respect it. It's I it, proper respect it. It's like a like a chess game, like a live chess game. You got to be ahead of your opponent at mm -hmm. all times. Always, you know, it really is. You know, just knowing the range, seeing what they do, seeing what they do on feints. How does he react when I do this? How does he react when I do that? Maybe I'm gonna throw this, but faint this, but it's, throw that. It's funny you mention that because it looks super physical, obviously, you mm -hmm. know, boxing is physical, but the mental part of it is just as exhausting and like just as Brother. on point as the physical aspect of it. It really like is. Like you said, like as as you're trying not to get hit, you're also trying to calculate your opponent and how he's moving and how mm -hmm. he's fainting and how he's this and how he's that. All of that while putting in your shots and not trying to get hit and not running out of breath because yep. the cardio, of course, is yep. a whole other thing, which is what I wanted to ask you about because you're, I know you've been doing bare knuckle the last mm -hmm. couple of fights. So now that you're going back into the gloves, I feel like that has, your stamina has a lot to do with it, right? You got to be more prepared for- Honestly, yeah. My uh, my boxing conditioning, for example, today, I had one, one and a half pound gloves on. So they're like 20 something ounces, they're heavy. Mm -hmm. And we're like doing like continuous one twos, and then like ripping body shots, continuous like, we're talking nonstop work. Yeah, for a three minute round, only 30 second breaks, doing like a couple rounds of that, couple rounds of just like right, like right hooks like on the bag, like power shots, bam, 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 like three minutes straight, like a lot of shoulder conditioning. And that's a whole nother thing as well. Like, and I've been smashing it. I think that's why I'm so thin. <laughs> How have you been I've, conditioning your shoulders? Like what's been helping you? Honestly, just like a lot of like speed bag work, jumping rope, um, a lot of volume on the bag, you know, like keeping your hands up. Sometimes obviously I'll drop my hands, whatever, but like keeping your hands up, doing a lot of shit where you just constantly fatiguing, but like pushing past that, pushing past that. The same as if like you're on a run and your legs start to feel tired, but like I've got used to that to the point where I'm like, fuck that shit, just keep going. Just keep going, you know, and I'll go run fucking 10 miles, you know, while I didn't want to quit at three. It's just that you just got to keep pushing it and pushing it. And the more you keep working it, the more you adapt to it, the easier it becomes. The same as anything, you're just keeping it consistent. And my, obviously a lot of volume with my punching has really helped with that.
Yeah, they call that like the I think it's called like the the runner's high or some shit. Where it's like like you said, after the three minutes that you want to quit, but you keep going for those six. After yeah. the six, it's yeah. like you're just numb. You're yeah, just numb. Nah, to listen, it. You just yeah, keep going. that runner's high is a real thing, mate. With the breathing yeah. and you really get locked in, bro. I'll be locking in sometimes. I just so honestly, especially on a long run, mate. Like zoning out. And where for do you me, usually run? Like when you when you're going ten miles, do you just go to a track? Um, no, so actually where I live, I live pretty much, I live on 441. So for me, you know, State Road 7 is a straight line. So I just come out and for me personally, as the mental fuck as well, I run in a straight line because however far I go, I have to come back. So if you go on a lap, you might want to quit, Right. you know? So for me, it's Got like, you, yeah. I like that. And I've got, I find it quite militant and and it's a straight line. It's like five miles there, five miles back. Pre precisely, yeah. you know, I'll run like four times a week. I'll do like five milers. So I'll run like two and a half to like three miles out, you know, and then I'll be like, okay, and then come back. Because then by the time I get back, obviously it's, it's double that. So for me, it's like, I have to get back. I've had runs where I wanted to push myself and I failed and I've had to walk another two miles. Yeah. You know, so it's like, but it still forced me to complete the whole shit. Yeah, yeah. Although I walked here, yeah. but it was I like, I, I fatigued out, my knee was sore, and now I was just like, nah. You know, at one time, that's only ever one time, you know, and, I, and I'm a big runner now, you know. Yeah, so. that, no, that makes sense. Yeah. So, what do you prefer, uh, boxing with gloves or no gloves? <clears throat> Listen, it's a whole different game and a whole different mindset. I'm game as fuck, and I'll fight with no gloves because I'm bad at that, and a lot of people are not. Um, but the skill level and the difference when it comes to the boxing is a different mindset and it's a whole different kind of strategy. You know, it's a different game. Um, I feel I like, I think it's more of like a boxing is more of a long game as opposed to bare knuckle. It's so quick because anything can happen. Bare in the knuckle first was round. so quick, bro. I remember my debut, just I got jabbed in the mouth one time, bing, and my whole lip was open. And I was like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> like the damage is like, it's so it's so different. So you have to fight a little different and like a bit more edgy. Whereas now I've got boxing gloves and I can sit in the pocket and take a few punches. No worries and fucking give you some back. Yeah. So it's a whole different game. And I haven't, I've had one boxing fight and I thought at 215, four years ago or something, when I was like new, that was like my first kind of boxing fight when I come from MMA. And then, um, you know, that whole fight was a whole nother story. But like to go from that, like, to now I'm like prepared for a boxing fight properly. That I'm excited about. So you've only had one boxing fight with gloves on? I had one officially? boxing fight, yeah, officially. Okay. Yeah, Shit. one 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 pro fight. Um how did that go the first So one? it was a kind of a last minute situation. I fought with two fifteen, so I was big. I fought with two fifteen. Um the guy was same thing, six three, six four. First round I tore my bicep from the bicep head, like from the top. And um I carried on obviously trying to fight with it. Obviously I had one hand, so I was throwing a lot of right hands. In the fourth round, I, I went southpaw and I threw a massive straight left again and I completely detached my uh, my bicep tendon. And I felt that shit, Damn. bro. It felt like my elbow snapped. Oh my God, bro. I felt it go bing. I was like, yeah. Uh, how, many, how many minutes were left on that round when you popped it? I had, I think I had like about another two minutes left. Damn. I think it was quite quick, semi early on and um, I was obviously, I went back orthodox and I just had it hanging down because uh, oh, I was like, yeah. Yo, it's so you're, bad. You're a warrior, bro. But I was like, right, right. And I was still like... Most people would have quit right there. Most yeah, people nah, would have nah. said, yo, I, I can't. Like, nah, you know, I, I just pulled my son. bicep. No, nah, I got on my shield, son. So I was like, bang, bang, <laughs> kept trying to punch in my right hand. I still scored a draw with one arm. You That's know, impressive. At 215. That's impressive. Against, and then that dude went and fought on ESPN like a month later no on some other show. Yeah. Damn, bro. You know? That's so, wild. like, it's like, fuck. And that was, like, my first ever boxing fight. So this, I'm really looking forward to fighting an actual boxer. You know, um, his style and everything's, you know, interesting. And what... I'm just excited to see how it's going to pan out, bro. Really am. So it's for Misfit Boxing, right? That's correct, yeah. Misfits. I think it's Misfits 13 or 16. Fuck. Shout out to Misfits Boxing. Misfits Boxing, Mams Taylor, You got DJ a good Flores. one. You got a good one. You got oh, Jake yeah. Brutal Bratzwick right here. I yeah. mean, yeah. I was going to... I got to ask you that, too. Why do they call you Brutal? Listen, my first fight was a KO. My second fight... This is when I was a kid. My second fight was a KO. My first fight was a TKO, and Dave O'Donnell was the promoter. 
he's still, he's still a friend. We haven't really spoken much, you know, he's still good people, but he was the promo, promoter of the show. And he was like, you're brutal. You're like brutal Boswick. And he was like, and I was like, oh, Jake brutal, but I was like, all right. Yeah, and yeah. I legit, just, that's how it came. But Dave O'Donnell was the originator. <laughs> Shout out to you. Um, but yeah, and it's just stuck ever since. since nah, I sounds was, nice. Yeah, since 17, I was 17. The name when fits I got called too. It. Yeah, Brutal Boswick, BB. I mean, I yeah, it. Bare Knuckle. You've, how many fights have you had in Bare Knuckle? Because that's brutal. Yeah, that's yeah. 100 I had, I, had, I had six. Your like, name probably like, that That Brutal probably shined when you it did was BKFC. Perfect. It was perfect for that sport, you know yeah. what I mean? For the Bare Knuckle with the no gloves. You know, that shit's raw, bro. You know, it's a, pro, you know, it's a controlled... I say a controlled street fight, but you can't do anything else other than punch. You know, it's a controlled professional street fight, you know, and um, it takes balls. It takes it takes somebody different to want to do that and really engage in it and, like, not quit after getting hit with fucking nothing and, like, man up and keep fighting because there's so many bitches on that shit. It's so annoying. Like, it annoys me when these people thought, ah... Oh, you're Bruh, saying that you could have your face ripped up, mate. Keep fucking going. Yeah, yeah. You're like, saying that dog. there's bitches within that. Yeah, I'm saying, I'm already, saying, yeah, damn. I'm just saying, like pussies, however you want to say it. Like, people that are soft. Yeah, yeah, no, of course, because I know, feel like. And if people it, think that they want to do it, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they get in it and they're like, nah, nah, nah. And then, and then they just quit like Yeah, first round, like, do you, like, bro, like, I've had my face punched in in that game. Do you think I enjoyed it? No. Did I learn from it? Yeah. Did it put some airs on my chest? Yeah. But it's like, you know, I signed a contract, I signed my life away for, for the sport. Like, at least go in there and do your job. It's what you get paid to do, you know? Don't half-ass it. Yeah, you don't sound like a guy that gets knocked out too often. No, like, you <laughs> drop me. Like, you see any of my fights, you drop me, mate. I'll smile, I'll laugh, and I'll get straight back up. Yeah, mate. yeah, yeah. Unless I you mean, knock me out, out, that's a whole other ball game. You definitely don't quit. No, nah, no, nah, I didn't. Even uh, if you, you tear know, your bicep, nah, that's wild. if you tear your bicep, you could get out, mate. You got blood where you, everywhere. Where bro. do you think that comes from with you? Like, that, that... That attitude of like I'm not gonna quit even if my bicep is torn, even if this, even if that, even if my lip is is cut, like I don't know what it where is. Where do you mate. get it from? I don't know, mate. It's just that inner fucking it's just that inner dog, really, mate. You know? Um I feel like it's definitely something that separates people. You know, I, I can't really put a, a trigger on it, but it's like I don't know, like <laughs> is it because you want to win so bad or you just really don't want to lose? Which one do you think? Either or. It's like, I don't want to quit. I'm, you know, I don't want to feel like I'm a quitter. You know, so you push yourself to the to the limit. And um, yeah, I don't know what it is, mate. Just some inner gladiator shit, bro, that comes in and takes over and is like, less go. Because at the end of the day, even in training camp and everything, I know that March 23rd, when I step in that ring, like everything is on the line for in, for myself health wise for my future and it's like i want to do my best and perform the best you know even if it's not going your way and you're trying to figure it out which i've had it's the same thing it's like you can't just quit bro you know so i don't know what it is just the inner person in me may have just tries to take over the show yeah it's that competitiveness yeah like yeah. i mean i definitely have that in me too like i yeah. don't i'm i'm not okay with quitting and i'm not okay with losing either i yeah. understand losing and when you do lose it is a lesson and yeah. i get that you know yeah. uh and it's humbling of course yeah. but until i officially lose i'm gonna do anything i possibly can and not take yeah, that yeah precisely out. you know and um yeah that really is it like that is it yeah so in the in the fighting world and and in this sport of boxing <clears throat> how often do you see talent around you when you're training in different gyms? Um, honestly, like, I'm quiet. I'm not around a bunch of fighters. My shit's pretty small, you know. Um, obviously, I train with Phil DeRue. You know, he's my, my strength and conditioning coach. You know, we got a training program uh, together. BrutalBareKnuckle.com. My bare knuckle program. Our bare knuckle program. Um, but, yeah, you know, with, with Phil, it's like... He, he's around like, you know, a handful of athletes. You know, we get like more one-on-one -on -one stuff. So like I go in, I work directly with himself, you know, or like Maureen Shea, she's, you know, she's an awesome athlete, you know, you know, she's good people. So again, good other fights to be around. When it comes to my boxing, you know, Lorenzo Medina is probably the most talented kid that I am around. 
um, you know, and I do learn and we, we train together a lot and whatever. Um, so I'd say he's probably the most talented that I'm sort of latched around when it comes to the boxing side of stuff. But I'm around, a, you know, I'm around a handful of people, but, you know, I'm not in no big gym with like 30, 40 guys. Like when I train, okay. there's like yeah. three, four of us maybe, you know, yeah, yeah. it's very just like quite personal stuff. Yeah, I ask because we, we've seen a lot of talent come out of Miami with fighters. Yeah, yeah. No, there's a lot. Of, I say, like, you know, I've sparred and trained with fucking everybody. Anyone and everyone. Like, yeah, Louis Palomino. Like, I've sparred with Palomino, um, Hector Lombard, fucking like, everyone at fucking like, ATT, like Bigfoot. Like, How was like, Palomino? Palomino, listen, we had, you know, we had really good work. You know, it was how you first He's hand. A beast. Like, he was, he couldn't believe how I moved. He'll be. He'll tell you like. You like, train with Lorenzo, bro. You're quick too, right? Yo, I'm Gotta super. Be. I'm super explosive. That's that's my biggest. That's my biggest thing. I have got a super fast switch. I'm, I'm zero to a hundred, real quick. You know, and um, being able to have that on chill and then be like, bop, 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 that's my thing. And yeah, he like Palomino was like, I wasn't expecting you to move like that for your size <laughs> and that, bro. Oh, you know, obviously I had about 15, 20 pounds on him at the time. Um, but you know, we had some really good rounds down at, uh, down at his spot, the kangaroo gym, uh, down there one time. And um, yeah, we had some really good rounds. Well, speaking of Luis Palomino, I want to know what your thoughts are with his last fight. Uh, again, Trout, yep. against Trout. I feel like, you know, it was a tricky one, man. I feel like Trout fought well. He really used his boxing good, his range. Um, yeah, I feel like Palomino didn't get to really do what he wanted to do. You know, I don't put it down to Trout beating him or Palomino like not showing up, but like, you know, I feel like Palomino, he's, you know, he's fucking good, man. You know, he's a really, like, I love yeah, watching him solid. fight. He's solid, you know, he's really good people as well, you know. Um, it's a, it was a tough fight, bro. Austin Trout ain't an idiot. He has a lot, he still has his experience. He's still fresh to the bare knuckle, but he's game, yeah. he's about it, mate. Yeah, and if you're about it and you can put it together, you're gonna be successful. As soon as you start bitching out with getting hit with like no gloves, cause it's a whole nother sensation. The fact that he doesn't and he can fight like that, you know, Trout, you know, he fought really well. It was, it was a great fight, man. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Trout. I just think that it wasn't enough to take the belt from Palomino yeah, that, from that's everything that that's, Palomino that's, has done in that's, his, in that's, his that's, BKFC that's career. Probably, that's probably fair to, for me to say. I'm just giving my honest yeah, opinion. Yeah, no, nah, I honestly, I, 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 honestly, felt honestly that, I agree with that, actually. Yeah, I wouldn't I felt say that Trout, was, Trout did his thing, and again, shout out to him because it takes a lot to, to yeah. get hit bare knuckle, even when you're used to boxing, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I just felt like to take the belt away from the champion yeah. with you having, I think that was his second fight in BKFC or something. I think it was, yeah. Yeah, I just I just felt like it wasn't enough I don't know, to, to, it, I just, to take I just, the belt. Um, Stats-wise, you know, from what I saw, I'd have to, honestly, I'd have to probably re-watch re it, you know, and really like be anal about it because I, I wasn't like, oh, no, nah, this, no, no, no. You know, I wasn't yeah. too, you know, too critical I was about just it. being anal about it because it's a title fight. Yeah, so I like, understand. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't like that, like, you know. I, 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 listen, because you know how it is, like, in the UFC and that, if you're going to be the champ, you got to beat him convincingly. Exactly. And the same with boxing, you got to exactly. beat him convincingly. So, yeah, I respect that. I do respect that. Um, yeah, it's a tricky one, man. It's the fight business, bro. And, like, Companies are companies, and they're gonna do what they're gonna do, and they're gonna try and match up. And yeah, bro, this is the fight is. game, bro. Listen, but it's you, crazy. you you mentioned that you have a program out for bare knuckles. Yes, yes, I do. I do. Tell me more about that. Um, yeah, you, I should, you came we, up we, with it, or you and your coach? Yeah, yeah, no, me, me and Phil Daru. Um, we, uh, we, uh, yeah, we got. Us, I think it's a, an eight week program. Um, yeah, you know bunch of stuff on there about conditioning your hands, um, you know, how to train for bare knuckle, you know, all our kind of work and train and all the, all the footage is on there and, you know, you can, you know, watch, join in and, you know, subscribe and obviously get the program itself. Yeah, Brutal Bare, yeah, uh, Brutal Bare Knuckle, BrutalBareKnuckle.com. Yeah, nice. yeah, that's uh, that's how I'm running. It was, it was, it's on my Instagram, but I've changed in my bio, so it's not there right now. Just the ticket link is out there right now for Misfits. So if you are going to Nashville and you do want to watch the fight, the link is in my bio on the gram, son. Brutal Bostwick. There you go. You already Real know. <laughs> so let's talk about your next fight. Where is it? Uh, my next fight is going to be um, in Nashville, Tennessee, March 23rd for misfits yo i'm so excited bro <laughs> it's gonna be live on the zone also so make sure you tune in yeah we're 100 um, gonna watch this yeah support. listen it's gonna be an absolute school child the main events are 2v1 
So that's going to be... 2v1? A 2v1. No way. Yeah, yeah. So In what? Like MMA or boxing? No, it's all boxing. I've never seen that in my life. Misfit, yeah, it's all, it's all boxing. So two yeah, v one on, on boxing. Yeah, so misfits so how- do things different. There's a lot. They have influence and stuff that come through on the show. Yeah, yeah. And um, like their last one that I went to, they had a two v two. Damn, bro. So that's so two of the fighters are in. Like say two blue and two red. Yeah. So one blue and one red are in. The other people are standing on the outside like a tag team. Yeah. Yeah, that's pure entertainment. Right. Precisely. That's why Misfits <laughs> is interesting. That's why I want to get on the show. Because makes it's sense. Like, makes sense. I makes think sense. you do. I think you do great. At I'm Misfits, gonna fit right sure. in. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna go and steal the fucking show. You think? So. You, think <laughs> you think you can handle two v one? Listen, if you just I would got love one? a two v one. I yeah. already saw that. I was like, bro, I fight a two v one. I wonder if they would even let me do a bet. I could fight on there against some fucking idiot like one of these people that like talking rubbish. You know. So when they know. when they do a two v one, like I'm assuming the two are as as strong. No, I think the, no, no, no. They are, but one one person would be in. And then they have to tag in and out. Oh, so like, I thought say, you meant two v one, like two. No, I don't one think it's the at the same. I don't okay, think okay. that it's at the same time. As far as I'm aware, Damn, you gotta be they a tag team. Warrior for that. So like you're taking some damage or whatever, you can go over to your corner and That's tag him. Crazy. So then he'd have to back up. They switch, and then he'd be sparring. With, then he'd be fighting. With, obviously, with a That's fresh, like David fresh body. And Goliath type it's of thing. interesting. <laughs> you know, I'd ex- that, that's what I'm saying. Like, then kind of challenges or that. That sounds fun to me. That is you know? fun. And, like, that is I'm fun. game about it. That, you that's know? a game. Yeah, hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? Like so, game. like, that's what I'm excited about. Yeah. So, Nashville, Tennessee, March twenty third. What do you know about your opponent? Uh, Chris Avila. He um, he's from the Nate Diaz camp, you know. So if you know Nate Diaz, if you saw the Jake Paul Nate Diaz fight, you know you you kind of see how he fights that slap kind of type deal boxing. No, he can box, but it's just different, you know. Um, yeah, you know he's got he comes from MMA. I, I think he fought in the UFC. He got Bellator. You know he's got his history and stuff. Um, he's a little longer than me. Other than that, bruv, I'm gonna be his biggest dog fight. How many fights does he have in, do you know? Um, in boxing, I think he's like three and one or four, three and one, four and one. You feel like you're ready for him? All day, son. <laughs> How long have you been day. training for this fight? I've been training, what, 18 years for this fight, mate. <laughs> I've been in a fight game 18 years. However you want to say it, I'll see it specifically or whatever. It's been a whole investment, mate. This is a lifetime investment. You know, fighting is what I know and fighting is what I've been invested into. This fight specifically, yeah, I've had a couple months, you know, specifically for him. But yeah. boxing, proper boxing, nine months, I've had gloves on working my boxing. That's big. I feel like not bare knuckle, not MMA, not nothing. Boxing. I went back to basics, back to jabs and one twos, using my feet with a rope around my feet so I can't spread my legs so much and shit. Yeah, I'm talking yeah, basics. Yeah, you ready? Bro. You know, Basics and for real. that I'm looking forward to putting on display. Um, he's a great opponent, mate. You know, like we haven't got no beef or nothing. You know, he's a respectful dude as far as I'm aware. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I appreciate him stepping up and having a fight with me. Like, you know, as off to him, son. You know, he thinks he's going to come and do the business. That's amazing. Bring your A game, son, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, oh, brother, I'm just, yeah. Counting down the days now, mate. I just, yeah. I just want to get to Nashville. Nashville's fire, bro. When do you land? Like, how many days? I get are you over in there. there I get the over there on the Wednesday. Got to do like media and stuff. You know, press conference on the Thursday. On the Friday, obviously weigh-ins. Saturday, fucking bang day, son. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, Sunday we heading back. So I'll be over there for about four or five days. Okay, cool. Oh, mm. so strictly business. Just business. You're going to land all about business land, and you're leaving after that son. knockout. Hell yeah, mate. I can't wait for the after party and that as well. That'd be lit, hopefully. There's an after party? There's got to be. It has yeah. to be, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Last time there was and I went, it was pretty lit. So I'm hoping this time I'm fighting on the show, going back to the after party. I mean, yeah, Hell Misfits yeah. sounds like a fun place. They bring entertainment, so I could only imagine. Yeah, no, it's a great, honestly, it's a great production. It looks like you know it's run really well. You know, um, get a lot of celebrities, a lot of influencers there, a lot, a lot of faces, a lot of people. You know, um, it's interesting. You know, it's a different kind of event, and you know, I'm blessed and super excited. And shout out to Mams again for having me on, mate. Like, I'm excited to uh, to, to to perform for him. You know? Yeah, yeah, no, really sounds sounds fun. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned that fighting for you is like a lifetime investment. Mm-hmm. So how long do you plan on fighting in the ring? And then where, where do you plan on taking it outside? Honestly, the ring? like it's a tricky one. Like for me, you know, I think about acting. I think about, you know, going that kind of route, you know, 
how, if, and when, I don't know. As of I right gotta, now, I'm I got to get you connected to G-Rod. He's, you get, he's an action actor. There I feel you go. like you guys could definitely... There, you know what I'm saying? So for me, I think being British out here, you know, my image, how I am, I feel I can act to a certain degree. Um, yeah, I just, I enjoy being in front of a camera, mate. You know, I enjoy just being myself and running with it, you know? And uh, I feel people like authenticity and like real raw shit. So just do you some, you know? So I, I don't know, I feel like with the, with the acting or whatever, I don't know, whatever, I just, I, I enjoy just being bubbly. Um, but yeah, you know, who knows, maybe have a boxing gym or have, you know, I don't even know, bro. I'm just fighting right now and trying to figure it out. Yeah, like, no. Yeah, day, bro. Like, I'm 34. I'm 35 this year. 35 this year, bro. Crazy. <laughs> um, but you know, I've got another three, four years left of fight in me. You know, healthy fighting, fighting in me. Probably more, but if I want to, you know, be smart about it, I suppose. And yeah, I've got to figure out Plan B and C. But as of right now, mate, I'm trying to be in the now. You know, I'm blessed where I'm living, where, you know, I'm fucking paradise, mate. Just trying to be the best athlete, you know, trying to find a great opportunity and yeah. Yeah, as long as you're doing what you love, which is yeah. fighting, yeah. anything else is just a, a blessing and a bonus. Really. Everything else that comes with that, mate, yeah, it really is a blessing. You know, I still see my parents. I don't go back to the UK so much, but my parents, my, my dad's going to be here in like four days, bro. Nice. You know, I can't fucking wait. That's, that's the, awesome, yeah. That's awesome. My dad's going to be here. Um, yeah, you know, my, you know, my mom comes out a few times a year, my dad comes out a few times a year, so I still see the family and that. That's yeah. cool, man. Yeah, so, man. I mean, you're definitely in the city full of opportunities. So yeah. wherever, wherever you want to yeah. do, whatever you want to do, and wherever you want to go, or wherever life takes you after fighting is, is the world is yours, you know? The world really is your so, worst son, yeah. Well. How have you liked living in Miami for the last 10 years? And have you lived anywhere else? So as when, you've been in America? So I went from originally Southeast London, I moved straight into Hialeah. Okay. I was in Hialeah for about three years. Do you know Spanish? No. Nah. <laughs> I know a few little words and stuff. Yo, how was that living in Hialeah and not knowing Bruh, Spanish? Da binga. <laughs> Yo, listen, <laughs> listen, bro. I learned a little bit, you know, yeah. I hear some stuff. Oh, bro, crazy. But yeah, you know, like the culture and that, it's crazy out That's here. funny because not only you probably can't understand them, but even they when, that, when you speak English, bro, they're the, probably like, what? I'm a proper white boy from South London sounding <laughs> like this. And I'm in fucking Walmart. I'm in Walmart being like, <laughs> hello, darling. Can I, can you tell me where the rice, rice cakes are? A rice cake. Huh? Guess what's that? Huh? Uh, fucking rice cake, rice cake? And she's like, whatever. She shows me to a, another member of staff. Hello, darling. I was like, I'm looking for rice cakes. Rice cakes. <laughs> Don't have a clue. I'm getting up pictures on my phone. Then I found another <laughs> member of staff. It took me three members of staff to tell me where rice cakes were. Not the, the most common kind of food I'm going to ask for. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. like, yeah, the language barrier was super difficult. Bro, you landed in Hialeah. That's not... Hialeah. That's like... Hialeah. The, one of the most Hispanics places in Miami. Yeah, proper, mate. Yeah, it's crazy. So where do you see yourself next in your career? Like, where do you see yourself as the, when you're on the mountaintop? On it, like, again, like, I'm going to take one step at a time, one fight at a time. But as I am right now, if I can go through Chris, how I'm thinking, I want the next one and try to do the same. You know, like, I'm not coming to try and hit a little decision, like, I'm coming for a fight, fight. Yeah. And like putting my skills really together to really showcase my work. And if I do that, it's gonna look spectacular and I will get a finish. And when that happens, what's gonna be next? If I'm there knocking somebody out and it looks spectacular, you're gonna give me somebody else. And then it's gonna be whatever, whatever. I just don't know where that's gonna go. As of right now, this is my first proper boxing fight. Yeah, it's exciting. I'm just trying to break the ice, even in the boxing world. Yeah. So the fact that I'm even getting to do that, let's just even see how that goes. I think you're gonna smash the ice. Honestly, I think I'm gonna absolutely melt the shit out of it, but let's see, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like you said, you said it best. You're not only a great fighter, you're quick, but you're entertaining. And yeah. we know how boxing is. They love somebody that can entertain they a crowd. They want a show. Yeah. They want, you know, yeah, they want yeah. people to have fun. Like, and a hard hitter like you. Yeah. So. And a heavy hitter. Someone's aggressive. Someone that you know, looks good, fights good. Like, looks good fighting. Yeah. You know? Like, you don't look... My, 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 my fights ain't, like, sloppy and, like, 
oh, I don't want to watch this. Like, yeah. Oh, Oh God! Oh, oh he's gonna knock him out. Oh, is he not? Oh, yeah, he might yeah, get knocked yeah. out. He might get knocked out. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Like always, and it's like it's that like you, you keep people on the edge of their seats. Yeah, you know, and like I love that. Yeah, you know what I mean. I absolutely love that. So yeah, I'm looking yeah. forward to it, bro. I can't wait. I just got two more questions for you. I want to know, so. like, we're in March right now, so yep. I want to know you're gonna take this fight in about a week. And mm -hmm. then where do you see the rest of 2024 going for you? Because just so you know, like, we're going to support you throughout yep. your whole career. We Appreciate want that, to, We want to continue to support you and then have you back on the show a couple months later. Yeah, maybe before that. your next fight. And then we're going to keep seeing where you were before yep. and where you're at now. So oh. throughout the rest of the year, what's it looking that's like That's cool. I like that. that, that yeah, yeah. That's a cool little thing. I like yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. Um, honestly, I feel like once I break the ice with Misfits, smash the ice, whatever you want to say, um... I believe I'll probably be hoping to be fighting for the company again. You know, um, I feel like Misfits is going to be a fun um, organization to hopefully, you know, get some fights on. Um, I feel I'm going to get another two, three fights in after that this year. Nice. I think I'm going to have an active year, mate. Nice. I'm hoping to have a very active year. I want to keep it busy. You know, touch wood all goes well and super good with obviously the following Saturday for me. Um, yeah, I just want to be like, what's next that's exciting bro yeah so and then, again get me that. out asap because i got four rounds with boxing gloves i'm not expecting to walk out of there blooded and broken up if that's not the case mate i'm going to be in the gym monday and i'm going to be like give me someone else now you know so until i get there i Ready. can't promise anything but i'm hoping to have a very busy year mate fingers so, crossed sounds good bro yeah. so the last question that i like to ask everybody is what does miami mean to you was it mean to me? Honestly, like, I feel like the first word, what would it mean to me? I feel like it's a blessing and it's paradise would be the best kind of feeling for myself I could, off the top of my head, as of right now, because I wasn't ready no, for I that. No, I love that answer, because, yeah, you know, no. you being from London Listen, and saying that I this am... is paradise, it, it's, it's a nice feeling, because for the people that are listening and are born and raised here, you know, don't take it for granted. A Bro, lot of listen, people that aren't born and raised from here do, do see it as paradise, even if you may not. So I, I speak like to that. a lot of people, mate, and even today, where was I? At the petrol station, gas station, at the petrol station. And um, so obviously whenever I speak, they're like, oh, where are you from? <laughs> I'm always like, oh, I'm from London. And they're like, oh, what are you doing here? I'm like, oh, I've been living here 10 years. Like, why would you do that? That's what she says to me, why would you do that? And I went, why would I do that? I was like, this is fucking paradise, mate. Like, waking up, seeing palm trees every day. I live in shorts and crocs. <laughs> like, I train every day. I'm in the sun getting some tan. Like, your tax bracket's different. The roads are different. The police here. I, I, prefer, I, I like prefer the police here, bro. I feel like you get away, like, not away with stuff, but, like, it's more chill in certain ways. Like, you can't have street fights here in front of the police. Like, you can't be doing that. But, like... I just, I just feel like you do have a fr sense of freedom here compared to London and the people that, and I'm from there to tell you that. Not, you know, when people are like, oh, I want to visit London. Yeah, go visit it. Like, see the culture, like, live it, see it. But you, you didn't grow up there. Like, I've still got all my memories and my stories and I've got mad history from London. For me to have a fresh start and, like, try to figure this out is a blessing, bruv. You know, and seeing palm trees every day and the sunshine, like, hurting my eyes to have to put sunglasses on. I'm blessed, mate. But honestly, for repeating what it is, yes, palm tree, palm trees. I got, I got a palm tree on my, on my nice. thumb, a couple of palm trees. Um, so, like, the palm trees and I see paradise. I agree. Is, is the word for Miami. Paradise. Yep, I love that, paradise. Well, yeah, we're happy that you're here. I we're going to keep supporting you. you in your fighting career. We can't wait to see what's next. Cause appreciate you, son. I like to see you in, in, in gloves because I love bare knuckle, but that shit is crazy and that shit ends quick. I want to see you in gloves so you can showcase your skills more. I feel I like you're very you, talented when it comes to your fighting style, you know? Yeah, I and I feel it. like sometimes I can't be shown as much in bare knuckle because that shit is so quick. But it's going to be fun to see you with gloves on. Yeah, Because nah, like you said, that's yeah. where the skills really come out. That's yeah. where the That's where the head play. game is. Yeah. You've got to play the game, play it smart, you know. And that is a challenge in itself for me because I've always had Ed messes. So for me, this is a whole other thing anyway. 
my head straight, but I'm like super ready to lock that in, you know? So Fair that I go. cannot wait. Misfits, March 23rd, bro, is popping off. And where can they follow you? Follow me on my socials, Brutal Bostwick. Um, yeah, Brutal Bostwick is everywhere. Jake Brutal Bostwick is obviously, Jake is my name, obviously. But yeah, Brutal Bostwick, anything Twitter, um, yeah, Instagram, Facebook. Brutal Bostwick, you already know.